Hello everyone, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how does engineering compare to medicine? And I think I took a bit of a weird, not pre-med path in that I did chemical engineering as my undergrad. I went to UC Berkeley, graduated 2018, and then I started med school this year, uh, 2021. And so um, I'm gonna give a little bit of background on like what I thought the challenges were of med school and or are of med school, because I'm currently a first year med student. And then what were the challenges as an undergrad in engineering at UC Berkeley? And then, um, you know, for me, this is something that's interesting because I remember on day one of uh, UC Berkeley's chem -E program, um, I came in as a transfer student as a junior. And the one of the professors said to us that chemical engineering compared to medical school was, quote unquote, it made medicine look easy. And um, I think there's definitely an arrogance on the side of the engineers, there's probably also arrogance on the side of healthcare professionals. There's a lot of egos everywhere, um, but I think that was a little thing that just kind of like, you know, th there are these are sensitive topics, I think, and it's something that, um, you know, I will give my opinion on, and I think, uh, you know, everyone's gonna have their own opinion, so I in no way want to diminish the value of either profession. Um, and so with that, out, with that disclaimer out of the way, um, you know, I, I as I look back on, on what UC Berkeley's chemical engineering program was like for me, the thing that made it difficult was, uh, there were multiple things to it, but the first thing was the problem sets that you would get. And, um, you know, honestly, like you would go to a lecture and you would get your problem set, you would go home, or you would, you know, go to a library with your buddies and, it was really, really tough. Like, it, it just didn't make any sense, especially, you know, the first year uh, is probably one of the hardest because that's when you're still learning so much of the basics, the fundamentals. Um, you know, you're still learning about thermo, you're still learning about all these other things that, that to, to really be an engineer, to really actually engineer something, to design something, to troubleshoot something, uh, requires a huge background of knowledge prior to being able to just kind of jump in and, and start doing stuff. And I think that's a parallel between engineering and medicine. But basically the thing was like, you know, you would get these problem sets and in my case at least, you know, I would spend hours and hours every day just looking at these things, trying to think of a way in which, you know, you could break the problem statement down and how you could model it. And, you know, you would just go down all these rabbit holes because the way the problem statements were written were ways in which you would go down rabbit holes and they would give you more data than you needed or they would give you things that would make you think you needed to do a bunch of other stuff when it was simpler than that or, you know, or, you know, realize that you couldn't actually solve it because you didn't make the right assumptions or, you know, there's just so many things that made it tough. Um, and the exams were similar in that regard in that you know it's it's not even about getting the right answer it's about showing your thought process and showing that you know what assumptions to make and showing that you know it's not about math it's not about being able to, to add or subtract or divide numbers they just want to see that you understand the types of assumptions you have to make to appropriately model a system to define a control volume that is appropriate for a system and to basically demonstrate that you've been able to get the key points away from the lectures and apply them not just memorize a formula but to actually apply that formula because anyone can look up these formulas it's like the human element of this comes in to the part where you are applying what you know about a mass balance or a mole balance or an energy balance to a new problem that people hasn't been done before. And so um, that's kind of what makes it tough is that you'll get, be given this problem statement and you don't even know where to begin. And you have to figure out, you know, what can you say? Is it at steady state? Is it not at steady state? You know, where are your control volumes? Uh, these are the things that like you would think about. And um, for me, I'm someone who, I, I honestly don't like spending too much time behind a computer every day. Um, I like building stuff or breaking stuff and, you know, working on things with my hands and, you know, getting dirty with something and uh, riding my bike. You know, I, I honestly didn't really spend too much time in the libraries. 
uh, or you know directly studying but for me subconsciously this is just me personally but like I would think about things in the back of my mind you know on a bike ride about you know well can we make that assumption and is that an okay so you know just just things like that and that's what engineering is is like you figure out how you can model something well enough to the point at which you can begin to derive utility from a process and um you know in terms of like the fluid mechanics courses those are really tough um just a bunch of it is a lot of it is math and you know you just gotta dig through all those differential equations and linear algebra navier stokes all those things they are important that's how we model how much uh, of a force you'll have in a pipe with a given set of parameters so it's like you know th those are the types of things that, that you would deal with as an engineer um and and i honestly enjoyed it uh because at the end of the day it was all applicable to real world examples like you know, and, and there were a lot of fudge factors to kind of, you know, make the models fit reality. But at the end of the day, like, you're able to scale this up and you're able to use dimensionless numbers to take what you did at a benchtop scale and, you know, think about what is this going to look like if we wanted to commercialize a process, for instance. And to me, that was really cool. Um, so that is what, you know, engineering was like. It's, it's tough. Uh, it's going to require a lot of kind of just thought on your end and it's and and the last year uh for me was the favorite year because that's when you really got to be creative because you'll understand stuff about thermodynamics well enough to where you can say what how big of a heat exchanger you're going to need what type of reactor do you want to have given your uh, reaction kinetics you know what kind of dynamics do you have there's all these things where it's now it's in your bulk uh, court to say how you want to do a process. So it's like you now get to create things. You don't just get to solve a problem, but you get to create something. And to me, that's like one of the coolest parts about my work is getting to s do something original and not just, you know, oh, let's fix something someone else made, you know, and, and support it or whatever. Like it's like, let's let's start from the, a, a clean slate here and figure out you know, where should your heat exchanger be relative to a pump or something else like that? Like, those are things that to me is just, it's very interesting and exciting to just kind of be like an artist and to paint instead of just learning more about the theory behind, you know, other people's works uh, is, is the uh, analogy or metaphor that I use. So that's engineering. Um, medicine or, you know, and, and granted, I'm only in my second week right now, but I think I've had enough of a initial impression to kind of say some things now about what does a typical day look like. Um, it's it's very, very different. Basically, it's, uh, I, I'd say it's 16 hour days every single day, no weekends. Um, like, you know, I wake up at seven, I try to have a good breakfast, 8 a.m. comes around, and then basically it's like studying or lectures, like you get, I would say close to eight hours of lecture a day, and you should at least spend an hour outside of that time reviewing that lecture and that content. So it's like 16 hours will go by fast, it'll be midnight, and you know, you gotta go to sleep for the next day, and that's it. And you just keep doing that. And it's like the days just become blurry, and it's, you know, you're lucky if you can find any time for yourself to just relax and think and breathe. It's like, it's just a, a fire hose of information and that's what makes it tough is that it's just an enormous amount of stuff you gotta memorize you gotta learn because it's really basically just learning a language and you know you gotta learn anatomy you've got to learn physiology biochemistry genetics um there's you know tons of other disciplines and you just kind of gotta it's it's there's there's no easy way about it it's just work it's a lot of work and that's what it is there's no secret sauce here it's not like this thing where you can go walk away or go on a bike ride and keep thinking about something and try to solve it in a creative way it's it's very much just work um and so for me personally i haven't really had to perform at this level for this long and that's the reason why people use the cliche it's a medicine medicine is a marathon because it really does feel like that every single day is a whole lot of work and 
you know, if you asked someone who's running a marathon, are you enjoying this moment right now? Uh, you know, I think ideally, yeah, they'd say, yeah, it's fun. They, they like running, but it's still work. You're putting in work. It, it's not like, it, it doesn't necessarily always feel good. Um, you know, and, and I'll, I'll wonder myself, like, am I even becoming a better person because of what I'm doing right now? Like, is me trying to memorize this bolus of information, something that will even be useful or will this make me a, a better person? Because Honestly, we live in different times where technology is so advanced that I have Google where I can look up, you know, what is this bone right here? And what's this bone right here? And, you know, what is the dermis composed of? Like, I don't really see how this translates into making me a more rounded person other than I have more knowledge about, or well, data, I guess, about the ways in which humans are put together but you know i'm still it's only second week two but uh you know it's it's definitely hard to kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel right now or to to feel like you know this is really worth it or it's really going somewhere um i'm gonna keep at it but just to give my honest feedback right now for you know what's engineering like versus what's medicine like medicine is a lot more work um it is a lot uh you know, engineering has been able to take advantage of advancements in technology, like we're able to use Aspen to to do a lot of computational work and just automatically solve a bunch of thermodynamics problems to tell us exactly how big of a reactor will be needed for given kinetics and how much yield we want to have. Um, and once you understand the fundamentals and the basic, you know, thermodynamic laws behind it, like you can run it and you can do a lot of work really quickly. Um, but, you know, right now as a first year med student, it's really just about memorizing, memorizing, more memorizing. And it's just kind of, it's, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's fun. It's just work. Um, and I can very much understand why burnout is a thing because, you know, it's, it's hard to find any time for yourself and um it's you know i wouldn't i would not say this is easy like if i could go back in time to that day one in lecture hall of uc berkeley's chemi program and talk to that guy i would say it's it's a different kind of tough um you know this is the, the material itself isn't hard and i know a lot of people will say this but basically it's like you know it's not it's not, you're not solving problems. You're just learning stuff that other people have done. And we've come a very long way in our understanding of the body and how things work and how things break, uh, pathophysiology. Uh, so there's just a lot of stuff you gotta learn before you can you know, come up to speed with the rest of uh, the healthcare professionals out there to actually contribute something. So it's like, there's just an enormous volume of stuff you gotta like, it's like you're playing catch up. Uh, and then you're, you gotta make sure you know enough to pass the boards and all this other stuff. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's, um, I, I think, you know, that's, that's what makes it difficult and challenging and, uh, definitely a lot of late nights and financially it's very straining. I'm taking out huge loans, uh undergrad was significantly cheaper than grad school, um, for, or at least med school. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more expensive and a lot more time consuming. Um, people, you know, it's just like, you know, when I was an undergrad, I'd say like, I probably put it in like eight hours a day on average. And I would work on weekends too, like Saturdays and Sundays, but you know, just because I needed to get the problem sets done and I, I wanted to have them done so I could like, you know, not have to worry about them during the week. Uh, but basically like, yeah, eight hours a day, seven days a week. That's kind of what I feel I was doing when I was an undergrad and uh, med school feels like it's double that. Um, and that's uh, so so that's what makes it. That's one of the things right now that makes it tough for me. Um, but I'm going to wrap things up with that. And, you know, I hope that this is helpful. Uh, I, I think hopefully I'm bringing something new to the table with my background. And if anyone else is an engineer who's interested in, in learning more about like, you know, what is it like to take this path for as an engineer? Um, hopefully this is a, 
helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone out there is doing well, and I'll talk to you guys next time.